So how are we supposed to remember all of the things you have to do post-operatively? Well, luckily we have a little device and it is post-operative. So P is to prevent complications. Common complications could be blood clots, it could be pneumonia, infections, things like that. Reorientate the patient. So they're going to be kind of out of it, right? Especially if they had general anesthesia, they're not going to know what's going on. So kind of letting them know where they are, what happened, that kind of stuff. Get them a little bit more familiar with everything so they feel a little bit more um, comfortable and less scared. Support their emotional status. So some people when they come on it, out of anesthesia are very like happy and excited. Some people are really frightened and they don't know what's going on and the fact that they can't remember frightens them and it upsets them. So they might be upset. Or they might be one of those people that was like really, really nervous going into surgery and they thought, you know, I'm not gonna make it out of this. And then they wake up and they're like, oh, thank God I'm alive. <laughs> so uh, supporting whatever their emotional status is. T is for tissue perfusion, so making sure they show signs of adequate oxygenation. O is for output and intake. So if this was a general anesthetic, then they're probably not allowed anything except maybe little sips of ice chips or something like that. Um, if it wasn't, if this was like a regional or a local, they might be allowed to have something to eat or maybe some clear liquids, whatever. So um, monitoring their input and then their output. So algeria, less than 30 mLs per hour of urine, that's something we're looking for. Pain control. So adequate pain control. When people come out of general anesthesia, usually it wears off you know, pretty quickly in the PACU, and that's when they start reporting like pain at the site of incision. So pain at the site of surgery. If this was a regional, like an epidural or a spinal, those patients are a little bit luckier. It takes a little bit longer for that medication to wear off, and they usually don't really report a lot of pain. And then a local definitely wears off. It wears off pretty darn quick, so they'll probably report pain right away. Adequate temperature. So we talked in intraoperative about preventing hypothermia in the OR, right? So the big thing we're afraid of here, again, hypothermia, but also malignant hyperthermia, okay? So maintaining an adequate temperature in the PACU. Their respiratory function, airway is always number one, right? So we wanna make sure that they are breathing and they're breathing unassisted, that they're doing well. Encourage coughing and deep breathing. For most patients, I do want to say one random thing about this. If your patient has had like a surgery on their spinal cord or their brain or their eyes or their neck, certain parts of the body, we don't want them to cough and deep breathe because it can increase that um, intracranial pressure and can cause more damage than it helps. Okay, But most patients, yes, we want to encourage coughing and deep breathing after surgery. Do a thorough head-to-toe assessment, and you're going to be monitoring this patient one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if you're the post-op nurse, you're going to be in the PACU, and you're going to be with them one-on-one, -on -one, and you're going to be able to check them constantly, okay? So we do a really good head-to-toe assessment. Infection control, right? That's one of the number one most common complications after any surgery is infection. So making sure that the site, the surgical site, is clean and dry and no signs of infection. They're vitals. So when you're in the PACU for those two hours, you are going to be doing vitals a lot. Um, at the bare minimum, you'll do every 15 minutes times two, every 30 minutes times two, hourly for two hours, um, then every four hours, we've left the PACU at this point, but then every four hours, every eight hours, if they start to become stable. So every shift at that point. But in the PACU, constantly doing vitals. And then elimination evaluation. Depending on what kind of surgery they have, they may or may not be expected to have um, a bowel movement or not, okay? Some of them, we expect them to have a bowel movement before discharge, and then some of them, we're like, no, we understand that's not normal. So depending on what kind of surgery and what kind of anesthesia they had, we'll evaluate uh, their elimination. Some final post-operative tips I wanted to share. If this is a bariatric patient, so a, a big patient, an obese patient, they do better after surgery if they are in a reverse Trendelenburg or a sideline position, they breathe better that way. And also, 
This may or may not be your responsibility depending on what kind of surgery they have. It's always good to do a follow-up phone call after discharge. So if the patient is discharged same day, call them the next day, ask them how are you doing? Ask them if they understand what they're supposed to be doing, their medication regimen, their activity restrictions, all that. Because usually they forget, right? Or usually they have questions that they didn't think of the day before. So now's a good time to reinforce any appropriate teaching and answer any questions they may have.